I don't think I have bad days. I think we have that in common. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I'm trying to think now of. Yeah. A bad day, you know. I mean, I shoot. I just. I love life, man. I do too. I mean, <laughs> life's pretty good. I mean, here's the deal. We we number one, we have a job. Um, you know, you're married happily. I'm married happily. We have kids. Biggest blessing in the world. Yeah. Um, I have the Lord. You know, and my, my I'm sure you're the same way. But you know, personally for me, I have the Lord and. Um, you know, second to that, man, like I've, yeah, I'm, I agree. That's deal all I can with, tell you. I, I mean, issues. We got a can of Mountain Dew, but some the great day cigars. Bad, you no, know? God. I, you gotta, you gotta fight, you gotta <laughs> fight some junk along the I way. Mean, you know, I mean, hit, a gar- hit a gargoyle in the head with a hammer every now and then. I mean, my Lord, you know, it's like, we'll, we'll be, com- you know, we, here we are. For instance, in my, in my last week, we've had, we, we're putting this new, we're putting a new record out this week, everybody on the 22nd. We just celebrated my second top ten with Fix a Drink, my new single. All these things. And then, you know, we'll fret. We'll fret about this. We'll fret about the stupidest. <laughs> I mean, the stupidest thing, right? We will just fret about it all day long. <laughs> and meanwhile, all of everybody that works around us will, will tell my wife and I, you know, slow down. Are you enjoy this yeah, moment? No like they, don't, they just don't come around every, they don't come around <laughs> all the time. And and so we're trying to, you know, I know for me personally, it's it's hard not to it's hard not to worry. It's human nature, but yeah, we just, we just try to we try to not sweat the small stuff. It's it's hard to celebrate when you're in the place you're in. Yeah, it is. I hard mean, to celebrate. I, I know when right. Ronnie and I really never, we never really. I mean, we were we were rocking all the time, mm-hmm. but we never really made a big deal out of we had number one parties and stuff because writers and people that were responsible right. and around it's like, us, what's next what's you got to help them but it's like man we just keep your head down it is what's next i know, you know? I, that's because exactly how i live we just felt like if, if we ever start gloating over some victory then you're gonna get knocked in the back of the head. Well, right you by know, the time you start gloating about it and you're know, celebrating somebody, about it, somebody's already in that somebody position. Somebody runs right by you. No, literally jumps off your back and literally takes a step over the top of your head. It and drives like, me. Oh. It drives me crazy. So I'm just I'm that guy too. I'm like, hey, if God. you're successful, you are. I mean, we worked too hard to get here, and now you, you got a little you got a little toe hole. You got right. you got to hang in there. So speaking of uh your albums it's it's really cool um, thank you very much everybody tell me about that song now that you're gonna laugh but i was uh, waiting on tom douglas and casey bethard two great songwriters to come to my house and to work and i was just fresh off the road and i was just flipping through the channels and i i happened to stop and go to the fridge get a drink come back and the kardashian tv show was on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I was, I honestly, just I was, go ahead. So I was, you're watching the Kardashians. I was watching the Kardashians. You don't have to lie to me. I'm not your daddy. The truth. It was the but, truth. I was watching the Kardashians. <laughs> I was literally just flipping through and kind of hung up on it. And so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm honestly pretty shocked in the moment. I'm like, how does this even, what is this? You know? And so we went on the back porch and we wrote this tune, everybody. And everybody wants to get rich and nobody wants to work. It's so true. There's a lot of people in the world that, Kind of yeah. live that way. Everybody wants to fall in love and nobody wants to get hurt. True. Nobody wants to punch the clock, but everybody expects to get paid. Nobody wants to make love anymore. Everybody just wants to get mm. fill in the blank. And, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the deal is when we wrote that, we wrote it from a, a, a certainly a positive mindset, certainly not a slam to anyone out there, you know, because everybody's got their own path, and I respect that. But, but I will say we wrote it from a lighthearted place in, yeah. in the regard that, you know, it's a lot like fix a drink in the regard that man, if you can't if you can't laugh at yourself, number one, you can't laugh at others. Number two, um, it's sort of self deprecating. I mean, we live in such a social media platformed kind of world. I mean, everything has changed so much. I ask a kid, I ask a kid about everybody wanting to be famous. I asked a kid a merch line the other day. I said, uh, or a meet and greet. I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And this is a little kid, like six, seven years old. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to be a YouTube star. <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was, I'm thinking to myself, oh man, you don't want to like get a guitar and start just, you know, like learning or like starting to jump off a house and land on my head. Right. What's get... a garage band? You know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Garage band. The only garage band they know is Mac computers. And so that's where the song came from. I mean, it was a, it's a true story inspired by true events. And we, I, as a songwriter, those guys as songwriters, and you know them both very well, yeah. you know, we, we just, write about things we know and see and that's just kind of that was perspective we took great from it. song thank and you it, and it's from the from the cloth of uh 
you know, everybody wants to go to heaven. And yep, nobody yep, wants precisely. to die, but so many great lines in there. Thank Re- you very much. Really, really cool. Thank you. And then, um, and then I'm just going to take a wild guess because it didn't show who the writers were, and I know you write it with a lot of people. And thanks for the invite to write, and we got to oh, yeah. do that. I look forward to hey, it. Thanks um, for getting back. Um, uh, the the one a little bit of this and a little bit of that. A little bit of Craig both. Wiseman. A little bit of both. Is yeah. that Craig? <laughs> That's uh, interesting. I just that caught ask. a couple of rhymes in there. I'm like, Jerry, Jeff, Jay Z got a middle of a bench seat. There's a thumbprint, yeah. And the and the witch line was that him turning a phrase. But I also smell you all over it too. So, well, thank but you. it's just kind of fun as a writer having written with different guys. You're like, yeah, I, I smell that. Oh yeah, but good stuff, man. Thank you very much, he's man. so much fun to write with too. You know, he'll get over in the corner, he'll grumble for a while. Oh, literally mm-hmm. for an hour. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then he'll just spit out some stuff, and your, your eyes roll back in your head, and you go, "Did you just think of that?" Hey, <laughs> Ben Hayslip and I are the you know wrote that with with him, and we were in the room together, and we were both looking at each other like, like, what do we do next? You know, and, and so he's over there just clicking his mouse and playing his guitar and doing his deal. It's and it truly is, as you know, it's truly a, it's a pretty methodical genius kind of moment watching him work because uh-huh. you really kind of mad scientist, you really don't know what he's doing at all. Or if he's even in the room with you, really. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, when I say that as a great compliment to him, by the yeah. way, uh, great respect. It's it's an amazing process watching him do it. And then you're right. He turns around and all of a sudden he's got something. And, and then, uh, you know, he's prodding you. What you got? What you got? And, and, and man, I just started rapping. I uh-huh. just started rapping those. You fall somewhere between a preppy and a hippie and those kind of those kind of things. And the song just kind of fell together. And all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're all at home. And then we get this, we get this boom. We get this work tape demo. And it's... It's awesome, and we we literally, uh, I get you know we gave him producer credit on this record. I saw particularly that, yeah. on that song because it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean when you have somebody of that genius caliber, mm-hmm. um, and and we basically took the recording, the real life recording, and we dissected his track, and because you you cannot recreate genius sometimes you just can't. When it happens, it happens, and you have to capitalize on that. And so we we took a lot of his track. Scott Hendricks was uh, was was the great brilliance behind that dissected it into a million pieces and then we recorded you know real instruments and played around Mm -hmm. it um which turned out to be a great track on the record we used all the original horns um the same guys who did you know all the women i've never had hank jr records and those kind of things Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's kind of my that that would be kind of my ode to the hank jr mid 80s era you know kind (laughs) of song and that which i I grew up on i love and and um and and i like that song very much well, they're all great, and congrats Thank again you. on Fix a Drink. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you probably, I, I won't mention any names or any writers, but I can think over the years and when I when I hear writers, and you, you, you know, you had a great country song out last year. I mean, you you know, you put out a song that you really believed in and, and whatever, and probably didn't expect it maybe to blow up the charts, but... You know, I think you showed a lot of heart with that. But Thank then you, you come back with this song like Fix a Drink, which is a it's a bit of a shadow to buy me a boat. Oh yeah. But you know, I can think of other writers I'm like, man, why don't you you know, just follow that follow that lead a little bit, you know, and, mm-hmm. and at least give your fans something to 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 identify with. You know, yep. it's like and I think that's really where a lot of ways careers are built and sometimes people run from you know success with a song or whatever and fans get confused especially in the early going you mm-hmm. know i mean once you get a few songs down the road so i think that was a that was a great come and i'm not surprised you. To, uh, with the success of it my favorite song um on on the album for just from just an emotional standpoint what would you guess drunk girl yep take a drunk girl home Thank you. It is, man. I mean, I liked it. again. We're good guys. I think yeah. I can honestly no, say that. I'm a good that. guy. No, I, th- I think and, you are and, too. Thank you. And um, it really just disgusts me so many times that, man, so many young, especially young people, and all the stuff that college guys are doing, just abusing women and stuff like that. Man, it yep. just. Man, it's it's upsetting. I don't know any better way to put it. You know that we're not all like that. You know, it's just we're not. And it's and man, you sit with your wife in a room and you watch this on stuff going down on television. And mm-hmm. it's, 
and she knows, but you know, I'm sitting there with my daughter too, and it's like, what a great song. What Thank a you. great way to say, here's the right thing to do. Thank you. Guys, it's informational. Yeah. You know, there's a difference in thumping people over the head with stuff. That never works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a, it never worked with me. Yeah. And there's a difference in just giving somebody good information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, they always say it's all about how you're raised. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all so, about how you're raised. So explain to our listeners what that song's about because it may not, be a song on the radio. I, I'd like to see it on the radio. Well, we're gonna we're gonna make you? it one either way. At some, at some point, it yeah. will be sooner than later. I, I got to tell you, I think it needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, and and you you know you touched on on speaking about daughters. We wrote it from a father's perspective. Um, myself, Tom Douglas, and Scooter Caruso, and we's you know they're both highly accredited to their to their own claim. And uh, but the song basically wrote itself, kicks. I mean, we were just in stewards of the boat that day, and we were just in the room. The song was literally just I know that sounds crazy but as you know as a songwriter being one some songs write themselves literally and that's kind of how I feel about mm -hmm. it wrote it from a father, father's perspective and you you literally said everything that I would say uh, perfectly <laughs> <laughs> I mean the bottom line is I guess we live in a I guess we live in a generation I mean it's been going on for years you know there's always going to be bad things occur uh, with abuse um, with you know sexual abuse any kind of deep sentiment that's usually not talked about usually mm -hmm. swept under the rug and kind of unless it's in the headlines you don't really hear much about it um the bottom line is i think it's a message that needs to be heard i have kids i have two boys two girls and i have them spread out at all ages so i identify very well with this you know i was speaking with tom about it weeks ago basically you know, you read the papers, recent events, even in Nashville, we all know about that. Uh, that happens daily in the world. We're basically taking a page out of a newspaper article mm -hmm. that, that, that happened about, uh, you know, in a, in a drunk girl scenario. We're tearing it out. We're holding it up and going, wouldn't it have been nice had this been a different way, a different outcome? And you know what? It's either way, when things uh, happen in a, in a negative uh, light, it's, it's bad. You can't fix it. The only thing you can do is give good information, man. You can give good information about, here's another way to handle this, guys. Mm -hmm. Here's another way to handle this. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, as a parent, it's important to tell my young men, guys, it's, hey, listen, I know you're going to drink. I know you're going to get out there and be running around and chasing, chasing tail. <laughs> it's, it's, it's life. That's, what, that's part of it. But when you get in these situations, there are two ways to handle it. It mm -hmm. can go really bad or it can go really good. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Drunk Girl epitomizes that. You That's know, take, cool. It, it, we just wrote it from a real heartfelt place, and we wrote it so fast. I think it was just all in our hearts, and we kind of subconsciously we didn't even know it, you know? Well, congrats for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, guys that do the right thing, you never see that in the news. You don't. And, <laughs> and you know. Because I can think about a couple of times when I did the right thing. It, you know, that... That stuff's not in the paper, but you wake up the next day and you go, whew. And by the way, I want to I want to add to that. Um, I want to add that for listeners out there, we certainly didn't write a song, or, or we certainly didn't try to write a song um, making the guy in the story the hero. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. Just doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a smile goes a long way, makes somebody feel good. Positivity breeds positivity. Negativity breeds negativity. Uh, it's a two-way street. Yeah. The bottom line is, though, man, if you do good, you get good. The good mm -hmm. results come from doing good. And um, that's yeah. that was really the premise. Cool. What's your uh, what's your favorite vehicle and why? My favorite vehicle, uh, my 97 white Jeep. Two-door, soft top. I've got uh, some vintage American racing wheels on it, slots from the 70s. Uh-huh. Um, I like it because it's cheap. I like it because <laughs> it's... Uh, you got great patina. It looks cool. It's got a little rust here and there. It just tells the story. It's got a bunch of stickers all over the back of it. Um, <laughs> I like it the most just because I really like the windows down. I like the top down on anything when mm -hmm. I'm driving. And I just kind of enjoy that lifestyle, whether it's right in the dead of winter, whether it's early fall and the leaves are falling, or whether it's the hottest summer or early spring. You've had it for a while? I have. I actually found the Jeep on Craigslist, tried to buy it. I was on tour. The guy sold it. The day before I got home on the road, I said, well, man, I, I want it that bad. I just love the look of it. Never even seen it before. And uh, 
He gave me the. He passed along the number of the guy who bought it. I called him and I said, I, I was trying to buy that Jeep. I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars more than what you paid for it. Would you sell it and deliver it to my house? And he did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good when they're a little beat up too. I finally got some. Scr- I've only got thirty thousand miles on my pickup, but it's it's a ninety nine. It's just kind of a farm truck, you know. Yeah. I drive it all the time. But I have driven it through the woods and run it up against some trees a couple of times, so I don't worry about it anymore. It's nice not to worry. It's, you know, yeah, I mean, the there's vehicles. just no time for it. If you're going to own it, drive it. It's the bottom line. I love my truck, too, but, I mean, I, I love my little white Jeep. Man, thanks for coming <laughs> Thank in. Thank you, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yes, sir. Keep up the good work.